En marcha con Coffee Break Spanish Season 1, Episode 3. Hola, buenos días. Uh, necesito tres billetes de ida de vuelta para uh, Córdoba, por favor. ¿La ida para hoy? Sí. ¿Y la vuelta? Para También. Para... ¿En qué tren va a ir ahora para allá? Entonces, Dos, hay un tren a las... Ocho. Nueve y cuarto. A las nueve y cuarto de la mañana. Sí. Y luego el regreso, cuatro y media, siete menos cuarto, ocho y veinticinco. Cuatro y media, por favor. Cuatro y media. <risa> pues serían 132 euros. Sí, sí. Con tarjeta, ¿no? Sí, con tarjeta. Esta es mejor idea que la pasamos por ahí. Muchas gracias. Hola a todos y bienvenidos a Coffee Break Spanish, a En Marcha con Coffee Break Spanish. As you may have guessed, we are heading on a day trip today for our episode of En Marcha, and we are on our way to Córdoba. Córdoba está a una hora, más o menos, de Málaga, y vamos a coger el tren y llegaremos a Córdoba a eso de las diez y cuarto. So, let's see what Córdoba has in store for us. Hasta muy pronto. So we are almost arriving in Córdoba and we've been chatting on the train uh, with the team about what we're going to be doing when we get there. Flora, what did we decide? So I think we're going to go into head first to the Mezquita Catedral, which is a really famous building in Córdoba. And it's interesting because it's a mosque and also a cathedral. Um, and then I think we might go and try some famous tortilla española and have a look at the Alcazar, which is another famous building. Y también, claro, hablar con mucha gente. Sí, claro, en español. <risa> en español, muy bien. Señores viajeros, nos aproximamos a Córdoba, donde efectuaremos una breve parada. Por favor, no olviden sus objetos personales. Renfe les agradece haber viajado con nosotros, esperando verles de nuevo a bordo. Rogamos a los viajeros que continúan viaje, no bajen del tren durante la parada. As with all episodes of En Marcha, we're going to be taking a closer look at some of the language used in some of the interviews or the sound clips that you're hearing that we recorded in Córdoba and in Málaga and so on. And this one is, I think, very interesting. It's the train announcement, but as with all train announcements and official announcements, what we're hearing here are formal command forms. So, for example, the announcer said, Por favor, no olviden... Sus objetos personales. Don't forget your personal objects, literally. No olviden. And that's your subjunctive form used as a command. So, no olviden. The verb is olvidar. But here, no olviden with an en at the end. So, don't forget your personal possessions. Then we heard Renfe. That's the Red Nacional de los Ferrocarriles Españoles. So, the train network in Spain. Renfe les agradece. Haber viajado con nosotros. So, Renfe thanks you for having traveled with us. Renfe les agradece haber viajado con nosotros. Esperando verles de nuevo a bordo. Hoping to see you again on board. And then the final sentence, rogamos, that's the verb rogar, which means to request or to ask someone to do something. It can actually mean to beg someone or to plead with someone to do something. But it's very often used to request that you do something in this formal way. So the, the announcer said, Rogamos a los viajeros que continúen viaje. So we ask that the travelers who may be continuing their journey, no bajen del tren, that they do not get down from the train, that they do not leave the train durante la parada. And that's bajen, from the verb bajar, meaning to descend or to go down, or in the context of traveling, to disembark. But of course, again, there we've got an example of the subjunctive or a command form. Don't get down off the train during the stop. So even in that simple announcement, we've got lots of really interesting grammar points. 
Okay, so we finally arrived in Córdoba, but we needed to get from the station into the centre of town, and therefore we needed to ask for some directions. It was my first time in the city, so I was looking forward to seeing lots of interesting sights, but we needed those directions. Buenos días. ¿Nos puede explicar cómo llegar al centro de la ciudad, por favor? Claro que sí. Mire, estamos aquí en la estación de tren. Pueden ir girando a la izquierda, justo en aquella esquina de allí, y encuentran el Paseo de la Victoria. Al final del Paseo de la Victoria verán la muralla, la antigua muralla romana, y un arco que es la entrada al barrio de la Judería. Por ahí pueden llegar directamente hasta la Mezquita Catedral. Es como unos 20 minutos aproximadamente. As ever, we're looking for keywords. So some of the keywords mentioned by this lady were la muralla, la antigua muralla. Una muralla is the wall surrounding a city, an ancient wall, that kind of idea. She also mentioned un arco, un arco, an arch, que es la entrada al barrio de la judería, that's the old Jewish quarter. And there, you can arrive directly to the Mezquita Catedral. We've spoken already about the mosque and the cathedral, which are the one building. It will take us around 20 minutes, so we headed off towards the centre of town. And on the way, we stopped by another tourist office and had a chat with the person who worked there. I started by asking, if I were a tourist, what would you recommend to me? How would you say that in Spanish? If I were a tourist... We're looking for an imperfect subjunctive there. So, si yo fuera, or si yo fuese, turista, what would you recommend to me? So, we're looking now for a conditional tense. Recomendar, to recommend. ¿Qué me recomendarías? Let's listen to what she recommended. ¿En qué trabajas? Eh, trabajo vendiendo visitas guiadas para los turistas. Entonces, si yo fuera turista aquí en Córdoba, ¿qué me recomendarías? Pues en, en primer lugar la mezquita, que es la joya de Córdoba, y luego tenemos pues, el alcaza, eh, tenemos una judería rica en patrimonio, eh, como la sinagoga y, pues, por supuesto, el, arque el yacimiento arqueológico de Medina Zara. Ok, there is some quite complex vocabulary in there. She mentions la mezquita, which is the joya de Córdoba, the jewel of Córdoba. And then she also mentions the Alcázar, which is a, a fortress or a, a castle in a sense. We already spoke about the word judería, the Jewish quarter, and this particular Jewish quarter in Córdoba, she says, is rica en patrimonio, rich in heritage. And she mentions also la sinagoga, the synagogue, and, por supuesto, and of course, el yacimiento arqueológico de Medina Azara, so the archaeological site un yacimiento is an archaeological site. And in this case, we're talking about the Medina Azara archaeological site. So pretty complex vocabulary in there. I also asked this lady, if there were one thing that a tourist shouldn't miss in Córdoba, what would it be? ¿Y cuál es la cosa que los turistas no deben perderse? Eh, por supuesto, la Mezquita Catedral de Córdoba. Pues nosotros vamos allí ahora. <laughs> Perfecto. <laughs> Almost everyone we've spoken to so far has recommended that we visit the Mezquita Catedral. So let's see if we can find someone now who can give us a bit more information about this fascinating building's history. Para empezar, hay que aclarar que la Mezquita Catedral, que es como comúnmente se conoce, es desde 1236, desde el año 1236, es catedral. Aunque buena parte del monumento tiene aspecto de mezquita, pero es exclusivamente catedral. Eh, esta fue conquistada, Córdoba, la ciudad de Córdoba fue conquistada en este año, en el 1236, y el día siguiente de la conquista fue consagrada al culto católico todo el templo. Cuando se visita hay muchas partes que su arquitectura tiene aspecto musulmana, pero realmente estamos entrando en un templo religioso. La mezquita antigua, mezquita de Córdoba, en su día tuvo tres ampliaciones. Eh, la primera construcción de la mezquita Aljama, que fue mezquita Aljama, 
empezó en el año 786 y la última ampliación se hizo a finales del siglo X, principios del siglo XI. Si no tenemos mucho tiempo para visitar todo, ¿cuál es la cosa más importante que, que debamos ver? Lo más importante, situado en el muro de la Quibla, que está al final del edificio, en la parte sur del templo, el antiguo muro de la Quibla y en el centro el Mirrab. Y, por supuesto, como no, el altar mayor de la catedral, con un magnífico retablo y con la sillería del coro, que es un trabajo magnífico de banistería. Perfecto, muchísimas gracias. I'm glad we were able to speak to Rafael before coming into the Mezquita Catedral. It really is quite an astounding building and unlike any I've ever visited before. I have been to mosques and cathedrals but never both under the one roof and a very impressive roof at that. This juxtaposition of Islamic and Christian cultures is very common throughout Spain. In most cities the same areas are home to both churches and mosques but there's something special about one building which is both Catedral and Mezquita. of our trip to Cordoba was extremely hot, around 40 degrees. We were pretty hot and pretty hungry by this time, so we felt it was time to stop off and get something to eat, and where better than the legendary Mar Santos? Why legendary? Well, Mar Santos is the home to the tortilla más grande del mundo. Now, we're talking Spanish tortilla, Spanish omelette here. So let's find out why no trip to Córdoba is complete without sampling the tortilla in Bar Santos. We're going to be talking to Jesús, who has very much an Andalusian accent. So listen carefully to what he says, and remember there may be some S's missing at the end of words. In the first part, he tells us how long the establishment has been open. Have a listen. The establishment pues, lleva 52 años abierto. Lo abrió mi tío, ¿vale? Y pues nos dedicamos sobre todo a vender tortillas, que es nuestra especialidad. Tenemos muchas tapas, pero la especialidad nuestra es la tortilla española. Did you pick up how long the establishment has been open for? He said, lleva 52 años abierto. So it's been open for 52 years. And the focus on tortilla. Nos dedicamos sobre todo a vender tortillas. But I wanted to learn a bit more about these tortillas. They're not just any tortilla española. Claro, correcto. Es que lo que sí es que no es habitual, porque es bastante más grande de lo habitual, porque lleva 5 kilos de patata y 30 huevos. 30 huevos correcto. y 5 kilos de patatas. Sí, 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 correcto. 30 huevos y 5 kilos. ¿Y cómo, cómo se cocina? ¿No, se, ¿Se cocina normalmente o en distinta manera? Igualmente que cualquier persona lo haría, con su sartén, vuelta con su plato, todo normal. Solamente que cómo se hace si es secreto de la casa, lógicamente. <risa> Muy bien. Pues ahora tenemos que, que probar un poco, ¿no? Sí, claro, lógicamente. Si no, no habéis pasado por Córdoba. Es un dicho que hay aquí. <risa> Perfecto. And now it's time to taste the tortilla. Vamos a ver. Mm, súper rica, súper rica. Que aproveche. So despite this being a tortilla made with 30 eggs and 5 kilograms of potatoes, it's made in the normal way. Igualmente que cualquier persona lo haría, just the same way as anyone would make it. Con su sartén, with your frying pan, su vuelta con su plato, turning it over with the plate on top. If you've never seen how a tortilla is made, then you need to check out season 3 Uh, episode 29, in which Alba and I made a tortilla española. And I think there are some photos around there too, so I'll make sure that we share these on the website. Muy bien, pues vamos a seguir con nuestra visita a Córdoba. Before we head back to the station and to Málaga, we're going to take a wander over the famous Puente Romano and see if we can have a chat with some other people who are visiting the city. I began by asking Abraham and Patricia from Seville if they were on holiday in Córdoba. Pues la realidad es que venimos de visita para ver Córdoba porque yo trabajo de guía turístico y estoy empapándome de Córdoba. Muy bien. ¿Y ya sabes mucho de, de Córdoba? Bueno, algo sé. No sé de mucho, no sé, pero vamos, algo sé. 
Y entonces luego vas a hacer tours con, con los turistas. Sí, tour con turistas de Sevilla, eh, los traigo aquí en furgoneta y, y hacemos el tour, después ya van a la mezquita y eso, y para Sevilla otra vez. Ok, did you get all that? Abraham was saying that he comes from Seville and he's a tour guide. So he is in Córdoba, in a sense, preparing for the tours that he's going to be running to Córdoba with tourists. So he says, los traigo aquí en furgoneta. I bring them here in a in a van. It's like one of these uh, minibuses, if you like, or a very large station wagon, if you like. And uh, hacemos el tour. Después ya vamos a la mezquita. Then we go to the mezquita. Y eso, and all that. Y para Sevilla otra vez. And then returning to Seville once more. So he's running day trips to Córdoba from Seville and he's doing a little bit of research today. We also spoke to Magdalena, a Córdoba native, and she told my colleague Flora what she liked most about the city. A mí lo que más me gusta es el barrio de la Judería y la Plaza de la Corredera. Son los sitios más bonitos para mí de Córdoba. Perfecto. ¿Y la mezquita también? Preciosa. La mezquita es que desde pequeñitos nos están metiendo la mezquita y es divina. Lo que pasa es que la tenemos ya muy vista, pero es preciosa, es una maravilla. So Magdalena mentions two places, the barrio de la Judería, the, the Jewish quarter, y la plaza de la Corredera. Now, that's not somewhere we've been yet. However, hopefully we'll get there at some point. Flora asked if Magdalena also liked the Mezquita Catedral. And uh, although she does like that, she said that they've been visiting it since she was a child. So uh, she's seen it many times. It's beautiful. It's a marvel. But she's seen it many times. Una de las cosas más interesantes cuando estamos de, de vacaciones o de visita en, en otra ciudad es hablar con otros turistas. Y estoy aquí con unas turistas, dos turistas australianas. Hola, ¿qué tal? Hola. <laughs> is that the right word? <laughs> that is indeed the right word. Tell us why you're you're visiting Cordoba. Um, I've came to Spain many times as a as a child with my family, but only to Costa de Bra Costa Brava, Costa del Sol. And uh, Ava's learning Spanish at school, so we thought it'd be a good opportunity to come and discover some places I don't know. Muy bien, Eva. ¿Qué tal? <laughs> Muy bien, gracias. ¿Cómo te llamas? Eva. ¿Cuántos años tienes? Tengo 15 años. Muy bien. ¿Y de dónde vienes? ¿De dónde eres? Australia. Muy bien. Y hablas muy bien español. Gracias. This really has been the hottest time of the day. It was about 40 degrees while we were recording the interviews on the Puente Romano. It's time to head back to the station and to head back to Malaga now. If you'd like to see more of Córdoba and see some of the video that we filmed while we were there, including the video in the Bar Santos, then you can check out the full version of uh, En Mata con Coffee Break Spanish on the Coffee Break Academy. Each episode comes with a full transcript of all of the Spanish that you've heard in this episode and also our language study episode where my colleague Anne and I discuss the language contained in each episode and give you further practice of the constructions, the grammar and the vocabulary. We also provide a full vocabulary list and exercises and activity pack to help you get the most out of what you're learning in each episode. If you've not yet signed up for the full online course of En Marta, then you can do so at coffeebreaktravels.com. And of course, if you have signed up, then you can get access to all of those bonus materials already in the Coffee Break Academy. Señores viajeros, próxima estación, Málaga María Zambrano. Final de viaje. Renfe les agradece que hayan elegido nuestros servicios y confiamos poder atenderles de nuevo a bordo. Por favor, permanezcan en sus asientos hasta que el tren pare por completo y no olviden sus objetos personales. Gracias. Well, as you've just heard, we are now returning to Málaga from a wonderful day spent in Córdoba. Lo hemos pasado muy bien. Ha hecho muchísimo calor, pero bueno, está bien, todo bien, todo bien. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of In Marcha con Coffee Break Spanish and uh, you've enjoyed listening to some of the interviews and the information that we shared about the beautiful city of Córdoba. We'll be back again soon with more Coffee Break Spanish. In the meantime, muchas gracias y hasta la próxima. You have been listening to a production of the Coffee Break Academy for the Radio Lingua Network. 
Copyright 2018 Radiolingua Limited. Recording Copyright 2018 Radiolingua Limited. All rights reserved.